Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Where the 99 Lead, a program brought to you by the University of Pikeville, where we discuss many different subjects and topics surrounding the University of Pikeville campus and community. Today, we talk athletics, joined by the Sports Information Director and Assistant Athletic Director at the University of Pikeville, the one, the only, Mr. Dan White. Dan, welcome in. Thanks a lot. Common name, Dan White. I mean, it might not be the one and only, but it's definitely the Sports Information Director here at University of Pikeville. So I'm sure there probably are a few more. It's a little yeah. bit of a common name. I hear you. But he's our Dan White here we'll at U-Pike. Uh, Dan, for those that are tuned in that don't know your background, let's talk a little about that. Let's talk about uh, some of your roles and uh, before you arrived at the university. Uh, well, I enrolled in college at the University of Louisville, which, you know, might not be the greatest thing to tell a lot of people around this neck of the woods, but I've gotten used to that. Uh, but uh, You're a hardcore Cardinal fan. I am, you know. I say that, you know, my career is U-Pike, and I'm, I'm really, I bleed the orange and black. Sure. But if I have to look to another level, you know, I do like the cards. Yeah. Uh, and it's been rough here a little lately, but we're, we're going to bounce back, I'm sure. Uh, but there at school, you know, I bounced around different ideas of what I wanted to do, uh, everything from chiropractic work to some, some oddities like that. And then all of a sudden I was like, you know what, Dan, you're a sports guy. You, yeah. you need to get back to your roots. And uh, my dad ran a newspaper in Kentucky his whole life, so I'm a, I'm a media guy and a sports guy. And so I figured out sports information as a career field, and I went into the athletic offices at Louisville and talked to those folks. And they allowed me to kind of step in and, and get my, my feet wet in the profession. And sure. from there, it just ballooned. Uh, worked at the Big East Conference that Louisville was a part of for a summer, uh, or for a year, excuse me. And then I hopped into the NAI ranks, a level I, I knew nothing about at Lindsey Wilson College. And I had to learn a lot of uh, new rules, regulations, schools, names, locations. And then uh, eventually when this job opened up, I've always uh, really looked at Pipe as a place I'd like to work. You know, I told people that early in my career, and here I am. Here he is indeed, and we're glad to have Dan White. You've been here how long now? It's my fifth year. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to believe. It really is. It's flown by. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And you've seen a lot of things go on uh, with the university as well, the addition of new sports. We're going to talk about some of those mm -hmm. as well. But uh, here we are halfway through the academic year. Yeah. Uh, we've wrapped up Christmas break. The new year has begun. And uh, while the campus goes quiet for much of the Christmas break, sure. We've got some athletic teams that are still participating, playing a lot of games during that time. And in particular, uh, we had basketball and bowling both yeah. in competition during the break. Let's talk about uh, those two. Let's talk about what they did during the Christmas break. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I feel like we played enough home basketball games in November and December to make up for a whole year. And, uh, yeah. and scheduling's tough on our end. We're obviously one of the more quality teams in the nation. Um, and the, what that brings scheduling difficulties. It's hard for a school to say, hey, we'll welcome you Pike into our place. Sure. But they might lose, you know, and more likely will with, uh, with having ranked programs. So we play a lot at home. Uh, that's not a bad thing. Uh, it's good. Uh, gets, you know, 16 and 0 men's basketball teams, which I'm sure yeah. we'll talk about. And sure. that helps. Uh, but yeah, those kids stay busy. Uh, everybody, the, the campus quiets down and they're still practicing day in and day out. Um, and then, uh, you know, playing a bunch of games. And then the bowling teams, uh, the men actually went to Las Vegas before Christmas. So sure. you can't, you, can't uh, you know, be too upset with that if you're on that team, you get to go to Vegas. And they performed well, a couple top 10 finishes. Now the women's bowling team kind of did things a little different. They took a, a nice little break. Right. Uh, and then when they came back and competed last weekend, I think if you talked to the head coach, I think the rust showed a little bit. Didn't have the, the finish they wanted. Uh, but that sport, it's such a grind. It's a year-long thing, and, and that team will get right back in the mix sure. of things. And it's extremely competitive. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're University of Pikeville, one of the best teams in the country. But yeah. then you also have, you know, Wichita State. you got uh, all the schools in Florida. Uh, the big D1 schools that you hear of. Sure. In bowling, the little NAIs are right there with your Wichita States yeah. and your Floridas and everything. So very competitive. And the fact that we are in that top five, top 10 range almost every time out says a lot about what we've accomplished sure. here. And there's not a lot of separation between the, the number one finisher in a particular tournament and number 10. No. It, it could be just a matter of, of tens of pins. And any of us that have bowled have seen how quickly a, yeah. a game can go mm -hmm. south for us as being very below average bowlers. But mm -hmm. these highly competitive bowlers, uh, they miss one pin, they miss one spare, and it can truly make a difference in the entire finish. Yeah, and these are kids that have bowled their whole lives. Yeah. And when they go play these other schools, I guarantee you they know those kids sure. too because it's a it's a community of a little, I don't call it little league, whatever, the, the, the youth leagues. And so they know each other. And like you said, I mean, to them, 
if they don't get a strike, yeah. it's a disappointment. Yeah. When I go and if I see it, like four or five pins dropping, I'm like, here we go. You yeah. know, but they need a strike you know, every time. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's very competitive. And the University of Pikeville, very competitive with uh, those universities across the country. The men's basketball team, they've been off to a tremendous start. Best start in Kelly Wells' tenure yeah. at the university. Kelly Wells has had some great teams, yeah. had, had some great starts, but the Bears, they're 16 and 0. Let's talk about their start. You know, anytime you break records uh, in the Kelly Wells area, you know you're doing something special. Yeah. Like he said, he's been here uh, 12 years and they've had great teams, but this year it seems like just, you know, everything, you know, the schedule worked out. You know, I'm not going to say that we played. Uh, the toughest teams yet, but we beat the teams that were there. That's sure. what I always say. You beat who's on your schedule. We also tested ourselves in some uh, uh, Mid-South Conference, Southern States Conference Challenge uh, down in Georgetown. That was three good wins. But like yeah. you said, 16 and 0. I don't care who you've played or what's coming up. That's a huge accomplishment. Sure. To get uh, to get all the guys on the right uh, page every game for 16 times. That's awesome, and it, it puts you in a position now where you get to really focus on what it takes, you know, thinking about the postseason. A lot of teams are thinking, you know, are we going to make it to the NAI National Tournament? Sure. Now, I'm not going to say our job's done. It's far from done. Uh, but our guys feel a little more confident about it, and now they can start fine-tuning lineups, see who's going to be those key contributors. Sure. And the Mid-South Conference uh, on the basketball side, uh, extremely competitive. It, yeah. it is one of the top conferences, if not the top conference mm -hmm. in the country in at the NAI level. And uh, you get a taste of that uh, with the first couple of games in Mid-South Conference play. Shawnee State, mm -hmm. uh, technically the eighth ranked team in the conference, and they push the Bears to the wire. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an extremely competitive league. I think six teams uh, receiving votes or ranked nationally. Uh, it's just crazy competitive, yeah. and night in, night out, you Pikes got a target on their back. Yeah, I've been, you know, when things are going this well in the conference, and not only am I a U Pike fan, I'm a Mid South fan. Sure. I like for the whole league to do well. So I've been touting them on social media. I've been saying, hey, give us a look, you know, uh, with the state media, the local uh, daily papers, and everything, because you need to talk about this. You got Georgetown number one, you got us number six, Lindsey Wilson eight. Uh, Campbellsville, I think around 14, 15. Yeah. Cumberland's, another school in the state of Kentucky. That's what makes it even more special. Yeah. All those schools I mentioned are Kentucky schools. Sure. And uh, they're in the top 25 the NAI. Now, the coaches may not like that so much because uh, if you're Coach Wells, you're having to watch the tape on these teams and say, how do we compete? You know, right. But we got a pretty good uh, group of guys as well. They've got to keep people healthy. And uh, for now, the Bears have. They, yeah. They've battled some of the illness that everyone has battled, but mm -hmm. injuries, uh, nothing major, and uh, that's important at this level because yeah. if you're down a guy or two in a conference situation playing Thursday, Saturday, it can be a tough ride. Absolutely. And uh, U Pike, of course, prepared for that ride in the Mid South Conference. Speaking of conference play, grueling conference schedule that this year runs January to March. Yeah. We come to tournament time. The Mid South Conference tournament, it's been in Frankfurt for some time. Sure and it returns to the East Kentucky Expo Center. Some of us may remember in the first years of the Expo Center, the Mid-South Conference was here. Yeah. It, this is not a new occurrence, but it's returning, and it's a big deal. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that. Both the men's and women's basketball tournaments and the cheerleading competition coming to Pikeville yeah. as well this year. Hey, if you're not a basketball fan, you're going to be pretty miserable around here for that week because let me tell you, it's going to be nonstop. Yeah. Not only do you have the Mid-South coming in here, which is, is awesome. I mean, it really is. Uh, I know a lot of people in the community might not be familiar with Life University or Shawnee sure. State, but hey, every game will be an amazing basketball game. Right. It always is. So uh, get out there and watch that. And then you also have the, the high school regional tournament going on that night. So sure. it's like, you know, might as well get you a 10 or something, put it in the expo if you like basketball. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty neat. Uh, but yeah, it's a grueling conference. You play all these teams twice anyway, and now we're gonna right back in Pikeville see people for a third time. And, yeah. And it, you know it's hard to win those games, but the fact that we get to play it now in our backyard is a huge feather in our sure. hat. And so thankful for uh, city leadership, U Pike leadership, the conference leadership, uh, believing in Pikeville and that we could pull it off. And like you said, they proved it back way back when. You know, and yeah. still 2000, sure. so it seems forever ago now. Yeah. But I think uh, we'll put on a good show again. Good show indeed. Basketball, cheerleading, you've got yeah. uh, a lot of student athletes oh, yeah. that will be in town. Not only that, but their fans, their families mm -hmm. that will be following them as well. Uh, University of Pikeville, a chance to showcase itself 
the city of Pikeville able to showcase as well, the Expo Center. It's a great time with hundreds, literally hundreds of student athletes converging on Pikeville for that week. It means a lot to do the, the yeah. communities and the University of Pikeville community. Yeah, the games obviously will be great. The cheerleading competition will be first class, but then like you said, just the business uh, of this thing, you know, how can you uh, say no to that many hotel rooms being taken, sure. that many people out eating in our restaurants, that many people seeing the tourism opportunities Pikeville has to give. And, you know, hopefully, let's pray the weather's great too. You know, yeah. sometimes in March, you know, we've been under two feet of snow in Frankfurt trying to play that thing. In yeah. other years, we've had bright, sunny skies. So uh, it's, I think Pikeville's such a, a beautiful downtown that to have an event like that and that many people get to see how this place has grown. Sure. I mean, even thinking about me saying this is my fifth year. Well, my first year here, you know, I was excited to go eat at the one or two restaurants that we didn't have right. where I was from before. Sure. Now it's like when I, when it's lunchtime, they say, where do you want to go eat? I'm like, I don't know, let's spin the wheel. You know, yeah. we need a wheel in the, in the yeah. office. But yeah, I think Pipe Bowl is a great opportunity to keep that tournament too. I think it's a five-year deal, but why not make it a 50-year deal? Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. The Mid-South Conference tournaments, men's and women's, and cheerleading competition coming to Pikeville in March. Stay tuned. We'll keep you updated with all the details of that. Uh, also, an exciting time, the first week of February uh, for the last several years. It's National Signing Day for the football team. Not just you, Pike, but across the country. It's an exciting time. It's coming up. Let's talk about that. Al Holland Jr. squad uh, last year. Big senior day, a lot of oh, holes yeah. to fill. Yeah, and some of the key positions too. Everybody wants to know who's the quarterback. And, you know, for the past four years, we've felt confident saying Sonny Warren out of Belfry would be sure. your guy. Now, he had a you know terrible time with injuries. You know, there's no joke about it. I uh, felt for the guy. He's a, a quality kid, student athlete, was the champion of the character in the conference, uh, but didn't get to play as many games as he should have. Uh, so now we got to look to the future in that position and a lot of defensive holes as well. Um, and, you know, Al Holland likes to spread that ball around, so I'm sure he's looking for some receivers. And, and all that's going to be really fun to see how it comes together on February 7th uh, when we have that uh, signing day. Uh, it's always, since I've been here, it's been in their uh, practice facility down on campus. And this year I think they're going to go to the new uh, HPE building uh, where our school of optometry is. Uh, so it'll be a new location. It's a very uh, beautiful place up there. And I think it's a nice place to show the, the future enrollees who are signing to play with us. You know, this is the kind of school sure. that we are. We're, we're, we're building new buildings like that, and it's going to be really neat. And, of course, uh, Pike TV will be there to mm -hmm. uh, cover that, and uh, it'll be available for folks that they can watch a live stream yeah. of that. Uh, they'll be able to watch a replay of that, and it, it's taken place in the last several years at the Hoops facility on the lower campus, a move this year. but. For those that aren't familiar with the F National Football Signing Day yeah. festivities, mm -hmm. talk about what goes on because it's not just some guys coming in, sitting at a, a table, signing their letter. It's a celebration. It really is. I think um, sometimes when you see it happen year after year, maybe some people in the, can get jaded by the experience. Like, oh, it's another signing, another signing day. Well, not us. You know, we. I think about those families, and yeah. that's like families that have taken these kids to practices since Little League, you know, sure. Pee Wee football. And they might not have thought, you know, they dreamed of him playing college football, but not everybody gets to do that. It's right. a very small percentage. So the fact that they've been able to go that long and get to this level, we're out here offering them scholarship money to come play for the University of Pikeville and, uh, and wear our uniform, it's something that we're very proud of. So uh, that day is not taken lightly. Uh, you know, every sport has signing days. So it's not, we like all of our signees, but football is such a, a large class and they're uh, uh, one of the, I call them our front porch sports. You, know, they, sure. you see football team, you see the basketball team. Um, so we like to welcome those families in and treat them right. You know, they got a nice, a nice meal for them. Uh, a lot of our upper administration's always there. And of course, uh, you all at Pike TV coming uh, gives it a little more flair too. Uh, it's not just come sign at the table, like you said, and get your picture taken. We like to make them feel special sure. and uh, they deserve it. They put in a lot, a lot of hours over the next four years sure. and sometimes five to graduate. So. Uh, we might as well treat them right from the start. It's amazing you see these uh, these young men who are we've seen play on the high school level. Mm -hmm. Many of them local guys. We've got guys from out of state from several hours yeah. away that yeah. make the drive in for the uh, festivities as well. And, and it's always special because there there are highlight videos mm -hmm. of their high school careers. Yeah. And then you get to see those guys each one sign their documents on the podium and as you said the families oh yeah you see the youngsters that maybe are nieces or nephews mm -hmm. or cousins that come and 
and you'll see families, moms and dads and grandparents and extended families. Mm -hmm. I, I, it never ceases to amaze me that every year there will, there will be families come in and there will be a dozen mm -hmm. that are there with them and there are grandparents and there are aunts and uncles and people that have been special and like you said, have been a part of yeah. their career, their upbringing, getting them to practice, seeing every game they've ever played and now seeing them go to the next level. And mm -hmm. some of these guys, they may be first generation college students. Yeah before football players, but college students, first generation, and you see the pride beaming. It's a really a special time. It really is, and I like to watch, you know, just, I know when I went to college, I didn't really know who was gonna be there with in my yeah. dorm and everything, so I showed up the first day, hey, how you doing? Well, this is kind of the, they're getting to see their future uh, yeah. classmates, yeah. Uh, teammates, friends for life, and you'll you know, see the receiver watching his highlight video, maybe look over at one of our new quarterback signees, yeah. and he's thinking, I could maybe work with that, you uh -huh. know, and the same thing on the defensive side. I, you know, I like to be next to that guy on the line. He's sure. pretty good. It may even make you work a little harder in the summer, too. You're like, hey, that guy looked pretty good in that video. I need Indeed. to step it up. But uh, a lot of levels uh, go into that event and uh, to make it special, like you said, uh, and we're ecstatic. It's a great time. The mm -hmm. first week of February, and, of course, stay tuned. Uh, we'll keep you updated on that as well. Uh, baseball and softball just around the corner. We think yeah. of them as spring sports, but they've got a fall schedule as well, playing uh, sure. scrimmage games here and there, working out. You see them on the field uh, from nearly the time the student athletes arrive on campus, both the baseball and softball fields. Spring sport, well, they get started a little earlier yeah. than spring. While we're talking about the Mid-South Conference Tournament in March, they've already played games. They're on the, the diamonds mm -hmm. in February. And that's just an early, crazy early schedule, but it's nearly year round for those student athletes. It is. I, I joke with our baseball and softball coaches. I say, hey, y'all are here in August and you're already hitting, you're, you're getting your schemes together, and then you sit around and wait. And then you got Christmas, you're waiting. Yeah. February gets here, you start playing games. It's like zip, the season's over. Yeah. So uh, that sport, most of all, baseball, softball, you wait around so long to play, and then it seems like it flies by. Sure. Uh, but I tell you what, I, our, both our baseball and softball uh, programs since I've been here have, have really been on the rise um, respect-wise in the conference and nationally. It's, uh, those games have become events. You know, it used to be, you know, you go out there and play baseball, and maybe some parents show up, whatever. Uh, now we got, you know, the whole volleyball team's over here, a lot of the basketball team in this section, and it's uh, really nice crowds out there for those games. And, and they're competitive. Uh, they've won more games in the last few years than I can I can say in a long time. Sure. And, uh, head coach Jim Pitt on the baseball side, and then our athletic director Robert Staggs, the head coach on the softball side. They've both done a great job. That's all I can say about that. Indeed, always competitive. And uh, if you get a chance to see them this spring or February, bundle up and yeah, uh, yeah. check it out on the the lower campus, Paul Butcher Field or Johnny LaMaster Field on the lower campus. You're tuned to Wear the 99 Lead. Today we talk athletics, sports information director and assistant athletic director at the University of Pikeville. Dan White, our guest today, talking all things sports and uh, what's up and coming, track and field. It's an expanding sport mm -hmm. at the University of Pike, but let's talk about the opportunities for those student athletes. Yeah, it's new to all of us. I've not been around a track team in five or six years. Uh, we've had track and, and field at the university, but we've always kind of used it as a, a spot maybe to have a football player or two or basketball get out there and still stay in condition. Sure. Well, we said, you know, why not make this a full-fledged sport? Why not bring in a coach and make this thing the real deal? And uh, Brought in Chris Easley, an Illinois native who, uh, you know, he's not from this area, but he quickly became familiar. He's out the high schools all the time. He's uh, trying to put a, a team together of local and national recruits. Uh, they'll play, well, compete in an indoor and outdoor season. Yeah. Um, they'll actually get started this week, uh, this Friday and Saturday um, over at the University of Kentucky, an indoor event. Um, and it's just only going to grow from there. You know, it's going to be a slow go the first year. We're sure. not expecting a full roster. Uh, we're just needing him to get out and get our name out there. But uh, anytime you have an opportunity, uh, there's a lot of kids out there in the state that run track and field. You, sometimes you only think about the basketball or football players, but track and field's uh, a serious thing. And the families are invested in it and the kids enjoy it. And why not? We should have it here. And, yeah. and we're going to do it. A lot of the multi-sport athletes at the high school level participate mm -hmm. in track and field. You'll see football guys, and, and not just the, the wide outs, the speedsters, yeah. but you'll see a lot of linemen mm -hmm. competing in the field events, the shot put, uh, the, the javelin. I've seen football players 
be extremely successful throwing the javelin. Uh, different track and field events uh, for many different athletes and both men and women mm -hmm. uh, participating. It's a great addition. Another one of the newest sports on campus that's uh, extremely exciting is archery. It's a new oh, yeah. sport on the high school level. Mm -hmm. Those high school students now have a place to go to the next level. We're seeing signings every day. Yeah, and we popped in there and grabbed a head coach locally, uh, yeah. Shane Hurd out of Pikeville High School, and uh, he did great things there at the high school level. I know, I know they are missing him, but you know, he's still going in there and signing kids out of Pikeville right and left. Uh, we're over at the local high schools all the time with Shane. Yeah, he sends me an email every time he has a new signee, and I'm telling you, it seems like every day yeah. he's got one. And uh, and that's an interesting sport. The competition-wise, they really only have three or four events scheduled. But what it is, it's daily practice and the repetitiveness of True. archery and shooting every day uh, to get you ready for those events. And um, I don't think it's going to take us very long where we're competing for a national championship in that sport, much like how we supported bowling early and got in there. Well, we're jumping in to archery earlier than a lot of other schools. Sure. You, know, you see schools adding it all the time, but we got in, you know, I'm not gonna say we were the first, but we definitely didn't sit around and wait. We, we saw an opportunity um, for a sport that's growing, especially in this region, and I think it's gonna be successful. Indeed, and uh, it, when I be began to learn about archery high school level, it's much different at the college level. Mm -hmm. Still, it's archery. Yeah. Still, it's the same skill set, but a little different competitions. And uh, I asked the question to Shane Hurt in, a, in a, uh, just a, a discussion mm -hmm. when he was first hired and we talked about the college competitions and there's no just one bullseye there. The, these archers ha shoot at three different targets yeah. and a reason being if they shot at one, chances are they may split arrows mm -hmm. shooting at one target. They're that talented and yep. that good at what they do. Again, highly competitive. And, They've had some successes as well with individual guys. Yeah, um, and Kyle Evans, uh, Archer Forrest, uh, he went and competed and almost made it to the U.S. Uh, Olympic the national team. Sure. To have an archer at that level go and do that, um, you know, with our first signing class tells you what's around the corner. And Indeed. Like you said, I go watch them practice, and, you know, it's kind of like bowling and strikes. So these kids, they want that thing in the middle. I'm yes. telling you, bullseye. They're not aiming for the rings. They want right. the bullseye. And like you said, uh, they get there quite a bit. Yeah. They also do the 3D style, um, which I didn't wasn't familiar with. Sure. But that's where you have the real animal type targets. Um, I've joked. I said we need to get us like a whole corral of bears, and maybe have a bear invitational. I don't know, something interesting. But uh, these 3D stuff is neat. Um, and the, I compare this sport a lot to bowling actually because of how um, individually yeah. you get into it as a family. It's, yeah. Usually you're not hearing, uh, yeah, I took up archery as a senior in high school and I was in college. No, these kids have been out there with their sure. fathers or their mothers out in the field, either hunting or uh, shooting uh, competitively since they were in elementary school. Yeah, yeah, and, and of our region, because of hunting, yeah. I, I think is one reason for the success. Uh, there are bow hunting seasons, mm -hmm. and I think many of these, as you said, families that maybe mom and dad, uncles, aunts, what have you, have been out there with with bows yeah. shooting at targets and they've grown up with it. So mm -hmm. they pick it up at a very young age and uh, this is not something new to them at all. And it's no surprise that there's a lot of success in our region. The University of Pikeville offering opportunities for those uh, to be a student athlete and show your skills at the next level. Uh, we talk about athletics at the University of Pikeville and of course, uh, when we talk about these athletes, it's always student athlete. Student comes first in, uh, in what we determine, what we call those athletes, and that's because that's the most important part. A huge majority of these student athletes are not gonna play at the next level. Mm -hmm. There will be a small percentage that will be able to make money playing their sports, but they're here to get an education, to walk across that stage, and I hear coaches from the different sports talking about their players walking across that stage and that being the most proud moment of their coaching careers is seeing those student athletes walk the stage. That's their priority. It's a priority from the coaching staff and the kids understand that very early on. Let's talk about how coaches keep those students on track, how they keep their time management balanced with practice, with games, with being a student first. Yeah, I think it's it's too easy to get caught up in the wins and losses sometimes. You, you know, I'd, I like to tell our coaches, you know, obviously we want you to win every time you go out there. Sure. That's the objective. But uh, 
we're also not high level NCAA sports. We're not a professional sports. Uh, we're here to see our, uh, our kids graduate and, uh, and they do at a high rate. And uh, we've seen our retention uh, really, really improve here in the last you know five years or so uh, because of the uh, putting an emphasis on it. And like you said, uh, you know, I know the volley. Every sport has a study hall sessions where mm -hmm. they bring in all the kids and they they study together. And not even the ones that just need it. You know, the it's the ones who can all benefit as a team getting together. And and we hold them accountable. Um, grade checks all the time. Uh, the coaches, you know, call the cat kids in the office and just ask them. You know, uh, hey, I noticed this class you're not doing so well in. How can we help you? How can we get you help? Sure. It's all about uh, treating everybody as an individual basis. Um, but I, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head, Andrew. There's not a lot of people going to be making money um, in the future off of their uh, baseball playing or their arching archery uh, abilities. They're going to make their money off their careers, and, sure. uh, and so I think um, college environment is a great place for that. I think if you want to get um, active in the college community, it's not just your sport. I love it when kids come by and say, "Hey, I want to go into sports uh, broadcasting. Can I volunteer to call a softball game or sure. something?" You know. I, you know, I encourage everybody, uh, all of our students and the families, have your kids do that. You know, emphasize getting out, out of the comfort zones. And I think that's what uh, you can do here at the University of Pikeville. If you are interested in something, we'll try to fit you in. Coach is, uh, of course, interested in their athletic abilities, improving their game there, during their time here, but also seeing these kids evolve mm -hmm. the, and the growth that takes place from young freshmen walking into maybe a freshman English yeah. class and then in a 400 level internship type situation, whether it's going on to med school or optometry school or someone who's in the communications. Mm -hmm. I talk to a lot of the athletes that are interested in oh, yeah. broadcasting and communications and that side of it, sports management, business, teachers, nurses, all coming from student athletes just like the other students mm -hmm. on campus and it's a, it's a huge part of what the athletic department at the University of Pikeville is all about. Our guest today, Dan White, Sports Information Director. When you see press releases and information about the UPike athletics teams and departments, chances are this guy is where it started and we appreciate everything he does. From a media standpoint, uh, he makes our jobs so much easier and does a tremendous job. I don't know if there is a conference or national award for Sports Information Director of the Year, but this guy is, is on path uh, to bring that honor home. Uh, doing a tremendous job. I know the athletics department continues to grow. Robert Staggs, athletic director, you're the assistant athletics mm -hmm. director. And I know both of you stay extremely busy. We appreciate all you do. Yeah, well, it's a labor of love. You know, you don't get in this profession unless you love what you do. And, and I, we both really do. I can, I can vouch for that. We, indeed, and do a great job for the university. You've been tuned to Where the 99 Lead. We've talked to athletics today. Stay tuned for our next episode. We'll talk all things UPike. This program brought to you by the University of Pikeville, the leading university of Central Appalachia.